Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create masking in Procreate Dreams. And the following exercise aims to demonstrate the power and effectiveness of using masks. You will notice that the visuals of this exercise are kind of interesting or maybe intriguing at least. And that's because the pattern that I'm using is suitable for the feeling of some sort of energetic power or maybe some alienish energy form. And the other thing is that because the masked window has a variety of curvatures and lines, you will get the feeling that this energy is kind of flowing through that window instead of a fake mask. So I have this movement, which is basically a pattern that I am animating and I am only revealing the parts that I want to show. So the texture here is a texture that I created in Procreate and I brought all the elements into Procreate Dreams and then I did the masking just so it would only reveal that part here. All right, so I'm gonna start from scratch, creating a new scene. Gonna click on empty and now that I have it set up, I'm going to go into Procreate. In Procreate, I'm going to click on the scene that, uh, or the file that I have the elements that I need for. I have this layer for the spaceship and this layer for the background. And this layer is what's going to be effectively doing that effect in this area. And this pattern here is going to be making that effect of movement and sort of energetic look so i'm going to select the three layers that i want which is the background the spaceship and that pattern and since i already have a scene ready for me in procreate dreams now i can go and import them here first of all i'm going to align them and make the order of those layers the way that I need them to be, meaning the background is going to be in the back, the ship is going to be in the middle, and energetic power pattern is going to be on top. And now I'm going to scale each one of them to make sure that they are exactly the way I want them to be. So this is going to be the pattern, and I want it to move this way. So I'm going to start it somewhere here, and I just want to make sure, as you can see here, that it aligns with the area that it's supposed to be, that's supposed to be masked. Now here's something before I dig deeper into this. If you plan on animating the ship separately from the background while having that masked effect, then it is ideal in that case to group the spaceship and the masked effect, but we can do it later on, in a way that they can work as a group, and then you can animate that group separately from the background. Something to consider or at least sometimes it's healthy to think about this point early on rather than later where sometimes it could cost you more time to really figure things out as opposed to planning proactively. Now, how do I do this effect? In order for me to do that effect, I need to create a new track and that new track is going to function as the mask for this effect. So now that I created a mask, I'm going to go to the draw and you have one of two options. You either draw the area that you want to be revealed or you paint the area that you want to be masked out and hidden. And this is where decision making is important. Do you paint the whole thing or do you just paint that window? The other thing that I want to mention is that don't be afraid of making that mistake because you can invert the mask later. So let's dig into it. I'm going to drag this down. Going to the flipbook mode is going to allow me more space to work with this scene here. Now in this specific example, I want to elaborate on something that is very important. As you can see, my goal now is to paint that window area. And I'm going to actually use a color that is kind of vivid, just so you can see exactly uh, my point. Because uh, the white is kind of difficult to see. So as you can see, no matter how clean the drawing is, it's going to be confusing for you, whether it's looking through the camera or if you're doing the project yourself. So it's ideal in that case to remove the noise and distraction uh, away from your workflow. So even though I need that pattern here, I don't really need to see that pattern in my face. And remember, I am here on this layer here, the new track. And that is going to be the one that is going to function as a mask. 
So going back to the flip book, and now I'm going to paint the area that is supposed to show where that pattern is going to be revealed. Now two things I want to mention that are extremely important. The first one is, if you go into Procreate, and if you have layers of this ship, and let's say you have the line art, say something like, like this, you could use the selection tool, the automatic. Let's say, for instance, you want to do the same effect, but maybe for this area here. Then in that case, you would use the automatic. Then in this case, you click here, and you can see that it has made that selection for you. Also, if you are not familiar with uh, the automatic selection in Procreate, if you click and hold and then move sideways, you can see how that selection here is growing, meaning uh, technically it's increasing the flexibility of the color range that it's choosing. So as I drag it all the way to the right, an appropriate amount, you can see here that it's, it, it's making a really decent selection. And now you can fill this layer. Let's say I'm going to create a new layer completely. Okay, notice how I completely made that line art layer invisible, just so you can see very clearly what I'm trying to explain here. And then you can drag and drop a color. Ideally, when it comes to masking, you wanna you wanna drop a white color. So you can see here it's a lot easier, at least in some cases, if not in most cases actually, uh, to make that effort in Procreate before you get into your scene in Procreate Dreams because Procreate Dreams does not nearly have half as much of the complexity of the selections or brushes and whatsoever. So it's good to do things before you get into your Procreate Dreams. So that is the first thing that I wanted to mention. Another incredibly important uh, thing to mention is that don't get obsessed about getting things really right. You can even actually bleed it out or expand beyond what you need to paint. And then in this case here, based on the curvature that you are seeing, I'll just go and erase deduct the areas that I don't want. Uh, in this case, it may produce uh, cleaner surfaces. But as you can see, uh, this process here is kind of tedious in Procreate Dreams to do. Let me show you another reason to even do this process in Procreate. Let's say I want to do this the very same process for the same very same surface in Procreate. Okay, and here is the brush. Let's say instead of filling it whatsoever, there's this powerful tool in Procreate that actually sort of understands the curvature that you're trying to make. So I can, uh, a curvature like this, where it needs to be really smooth and clean, I can move it like this and keep the pen held down until it locks. And now you can see that you can actually move this around so you can make much cleaner surfaces. I didn't need it in this case, but the thing is, ironically, when you don't need it, your hand becomes, gains that confidence that wouldn't require that uh, automatic curvature. You can see it's kind of wobbly a little bit, or maybe the line art is a little wobbly, but, um, Something like this here, for instance, if it's like a straight line, you can just lock it like this. Something that has some curvature there. Even if the line is correct, you can see it locks that smoothness. And let's say sometimes it goes really bad. So even if it goes bad and your original line is better, you can undo it gives you that line before it does the automatic ironing, if you must. So that's another reason why even painting without using the magic wand or the selection, even painting straight out is more effective in. And I'm gonna make sure that all the lines are closed before I drop in the color. So it's cleaner and quicker, but you can still do it in Procreate Dreams if you have to. Okay, 
Now that it's done, I'm gonna close the flip book. I wanna make sure that all the layers are aligned perfectly. If if this is exceeding the uh, time limit that I plan on, you can click here, edit, split, click and hold, delete content, double click, drag, and this is now what we have. And finally now, I want to turn this drawing or layer into a mask. Click and hold, mask, layer mask. As you can see, nothing's happening because guess what? I still have that pattern hidden. Now, when I show it, this is what it looks like. And now I have one more thing to do. And that thing is animating the pattern. So I'm going to go here, click, move, move and scale. Then go all the way at the end. Before I make any movement, I need to click so it would add a keyframe. So now any change that I make from this point would be recorded. Uh, by the way, if the rectangle disappears or the selection disappears, as you can see, you can just tap here back. And now I'm going to move it. Notice how the movement of that pattern is flowing with an ease that may or may not work well for your example or for your project. So it's very important to experiment with the four types of eases. You have ease in, and here's the result of ease in. You have ease out, which will result in something like this. You have ease in and out, which will look like this. And finally, an option you should always experiment with, which is linear, which tends to be kind of boring in things that are supposed to be dynamic. But in many cases where you have, let's say, electronics, robotics, or something that has a predictable pattern, the linear tends to save the day. All right. With that said, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if this angle straight down is better than the perspective that I started with. And if you have any questions, just comment, let me know, and thanks for watching.